So in the last few videos, we've been investigating different subspaces of matrices, the null space, the column space, the row space, and we've been finding the dimensions of these spaces by explicitly finding a basis for the respective subspace, and then figuring out the dimension of that subspace by just counting how many vectors were in the basis. Well, it turns out that the dimensions of these subspaces are related, and the purpose of this video is to kind of investigate those relationships. So in this problem, we're going to be working with a 6x4 matrix A, and we are told that the rank of the matrix A is equal to 2. And we'll talk about the rank here in just a minute, what that means. So given that this 6x4 matrix and the fact that we know that its rank is 2, we're going to find a few different things. We are going to find the dimension of the null space. We're going to find the dimension of the row space. We're going to find the rank of the transpose of the matrix. So we're going to find those three things. To do that, there's a uh, theorem in linear algebra that's used called the rank theorem. That's what most textbooks call it anyway. And it says um, the following. It says that if you have some m by n matrix, so in our case m is 6, there are 6 rows, and n is 4, there are 4 columns, then the following things are true. First of all, the dimension of the column space and the dimension of the row space are the same number, and it's equal to what's called the rank of A. So for our problem, we're told that the rank of A is 2. So that immediately tells us via the rank theorem that the dimension of the row space is 2 and the dimension of the column space is 2. So that's one important thing. Also, the rank theorem tells us that the rank of A plus the size of the null space has to equal n. So for us, we're told that the rank of A is 2. Since n is equal to 4, that means that the dimension of the null space has to be equal to 2. So that'll come into play when we start working part A here in just a minute. So this rank theorem is very nice because it tells us how as the rank of the matrix increases, how the dimension of the null space has to change to remain constant n. So let's use the rank theorem to solve some of these problems. All right, part A, what is the dimension of the null space? Well, from that second part of the rank theorem, if I solve for the dimension of the null space, the dimension of the null space has to be n minus rank of A. So just take this and move it over here by subtracting it. So the dimension of the null space has to be n minus rank of A. We've already noted that n in our problem is equal to 4. So that must be 4 minus the rank, which is 2. 4 minus 2 is equal to 2, so the dimension of the null space of A has to be equal to 2. So we've been able to answer something kind of important about this matrix. We know that its null space has a dimension of 2, even though we weren't even given what A was equal to. We just know that it's a 6 by 4 matrix. We have no idea what the entries of that matrix are, yet we were, we were still able to determine the dimension of the null space. So that's one part. Okay, part B. The dimension of the row space. Well, this is pretty easy. Part 1 of the rank theorem tells us that the dimension of column space and row spaces have to be the same. So, And they have to be equal to the rank of A. Well, we were told the rank of A. It's equal to 2. So that means the dimension of our row subspace has to be equal to 2. All right, and finally, the last one, kind of the trickiest one, but really not that tricky. What is the rank of the transpose of A? So let's think of this matrix B as A transpose. So I would, like, I would like to know what the rank of B is. Think about what the transpose operation does. The transpose flip-flops the matrix, so to speak. The columns of A turn into the rows of B, and the rows of A turn into the columns of B. So what used to be column properties of the matrix are now row properties of the matrix, and what used to be row properties of the matrix are now column properties of the matrix. So the rank of A transpose is equal to the rank of B, just by substitution right here, nothing profound about that. But this has to be equal to the dimension of the column space of B, right? That's just the, that's just the definition of rank. The rank of a matrix is always equal to the dimension of its column space. But the columns of B are equivalent to the rows of A. So we can replace column space of B with row space of A. Those are the exact same spaces. And we were told what the dimension of the row space of A was in part B. We weren't told it, but we figured it out. It was equal to 2. 
So that must mean that the rank of A transpose has to be equal to 2. All right, so that concludes this video. This rank theorem is very important. Even if you don't know specific things about A, if you just know its dimensions and its rank, there are still lots of things that you can deduce about the dimensional size of null spaces, row spaces, column spaces, and things like that.